Hey guys, Mike here at Anime Tutorials and welcome back to a new video. All right, so what are we going to do today? We're going to talk about exploding meshes. Okay, well, does that mean that we're going to have fire and smoke and loud noises? No, not at all. What we're going to do is we're going to kind of pull our object apart to facilitate the process of um, texture baking or normal map baking. Okay, so what's to do with that? Well, to save time, I prepared a couple of things and I'll just show you. There are some random objects here in front of you. And I'll just uh, simply scroll on my animation tab uh, here so I can show you. On the right, you have a kind of hollow yellow cube with a rectangular shape that moves into that, like so. All right. On the left, you have the same, but you've got a couple of yellow lines going on here. Now, what's that all about? Well, I'll explain. The one on the right is my original object. I created this cube. I created this cube. I UV'd it. Okay, so um, I'll just go to my polygon menu, UV text editor. There you go. There's my UV, like so. And I applied these two Lamberts to it. So a blue Lambert and a yellow Lambert. And then I copied the whole thing to a gray uh, brother or sister, so to speak. And I baked a color ID map to transfer these colors over. Now, as you can see, something went wrong, these yellow lines, right? And that is what this tutorial is about. I'll show you the color map that has been baked based on this. So I'm just going to flip to uh, to Photoshop. And if we zoom out, this is our map. And I'll just zoom in. You can see there is some yellow bleeding going on here on these edges. All right. And there's some blue bleeding going on there. And this is for a color map, but in a normal map, you would have the same problem. All right. Okay. So how do we avoid creating uh, that bleeding? Well, what we do is we make sure that when we bake the map, the two separate parts of our mesh aren't touching each other. OK, so that's where this animation comes in. Um, right now, this guy is way too close to this guy. OK, so before we bake the map, we need to move it up or at least, you know, away from each other. OK, so uh, my yellow object is not really going to move. I'm just moving my blue object out. And in this position, that is where I bake my color map to avoid that bleeding. OK, now, how does that work? I'll quickly show you. I'll just take a random torus and I'll take a, uh, a cylinder and we'll just go to the top, move that in there and scale that up. And we'll try to uh, roughly get it centered. That looks about right. Okay. Now, like I said, these two are pretty close to each other, right? So before I would, um, you know, um, transfer color details onto this, I would move them apart. Now, <clears throat> in this case, we only have two uh, parts. We've got this and this, and they don't necessarily need to move both, you know, as long as one of them is moving out. So I'm going to concentrate on this guy. I'm going to move to my animation frame one, which is my original position. And I'm going to hit S on my keyboard to keyframe that position. Okay. Then I'm going to click on frame two. I'm going to move this guy up and out. And I'm going to hit S again on my keyboard. So now I've got two keyframes. So I can scroll back and forth. Okay. So what I would do is I would bake my color ID map or normal map in this position. And then afterwards, I can just do this and move the components back. Now, this is obviously a very basic shape. But if you have something like a, a part of a machine or a weapon or something like that with a lot of small components and you're pulling the whole thing apart, it's really neat that you can just switch back to its original position without, you know, losing information on where everything was. All right. So that's pretty much it. It's pretty straightforward, but hopefully it's still helpful. And if you've got any questions, as always, let me know. Thank you guys for watching and I'd love to see you guys again.